Hello man babies, Ruin Johnson here and today because you like it so much when you hear Ruin's voice he's going to give you all another story time with Ruin. I know you all love it so much. So today it's a very special animated story courtesy of my friend subversive jake now he's a very good twitter friend of mine and uh he's giving me permission to recite his story ryan the boat maker courtesy of moi ruin johnson so prepare yourself man babies i know you're going to enjoy this one so this is uh, Subversive Jake's Twitter page. He's a good friend of Ruin. And uh, you really all should go check him out. What a fine chap he is. Uh, very vocal on Star Wars and The Last Jedi. And particularly the treatment of Luke Skywalker. Uh, and you can see here, uh, he's actually did a little retweet of Ruin Johnson on Twitter. You can see I recently tweeted this one out. It's a picture of me relaxing in my uh, boudoir with my glass of soy and my Wookiee hide at my feet and my porg on my mantelpiece. Uh, there we go. I've, actually, I've even got my Ryan the Boatmaker hat on, so uh, perfect timing for this story. But without further ado, let's get into it. Ryan the Boatmaker, narrated by yours truly, Ruin Johnson. Get your passenger tears mugs at the ready, man babies. Here we go. Once upon a time, a boatmaker named Ryan was tasked to build a mighty boat. Ryan had made boats before, but this boat was being commissioned by one of the largest boat corporations in the world. It was going to be the biggest and grandest boat he'd ever made. Ryan quickly got to work on the plans for his incredible boat. Within a few hours, his first draft was complete. This is perfect, Ryan exclaimed. This is perfect, agreed Kathleen head of the Lodge Boat Corporation, Ryan's first draft was approved. A huge crew assembled to construct Ryan's boat. Ryan enjoyed the construction process. The crew did whatever he told them to do and everyone worked hard to make his vision a reality. It's going to be a work of subversive genius, Ryan, said Kathleen. I know, said Ryan. Ryan was certain that his boat would be a universally admired, groundbreaking masterpiece, and all of his friends and co workers agreed, with one exception a troublesome subordinate called Mark, who wouldn't stop talking about his fundamental disagreements with the project. Now, Mark had been involved with the boat corporation for decades. He was instrumental in the success of their most popular boats, all overseen by a highly skilled and innovative boat maker called George. Shut up, Mark, Ryan said to his troublesome subordinate. I'm sorry, Ryan, said Mark, but I've worked on boats like this many times before and there are fundamental problems with your design. Ryan thought this over for a moment before responding. Shut up, Mark said Ryan. After many months of hard work, construction on Ryan's boat was complete. Many of Ryan's friends were invited to the grand unveiling and they all assured him that it was the best boat of its kind ever to be made. Ryan earnestly agreed, everyone is going to love it, he said. Positive critics' reviews, along with the Boat Corporation's world-renowned reputation, set anticipation for Ryan's boat at fever pitch. The public were finally granted access, and Ryan eagerly awaited the praise he felt he deserved. But it soon became clear that something was wrong. The boat is extremely unsteady and it's making me feel sick, said one passenger. This boat isn't sailing in the right direction, said another. This boat has got holes in it, exclaimed another. This boat sucks, cried out another, and half of the passengers agreed. 
The boat industry had never witnessed anything like it. At least half of the passengers complained bitterly about the quality and integrity of Ryan's boat. The remaining passengers fiercely defended it as a great subversive work of art. It was the most divisive boat in history. Although inwardly incensed by the criticism, Ryan defended his creation. The goal is never to divide or make people upset, he said. But these conversations were going to have to happen at some point for the boat industry to move forward and stay vital. The best way for the boat industry to grow is to make strong boats that stay afloat, retorted the passengers, as the holes in Ryan's boat caused it to slowly fill with water. I can explain why this isn't going to be a problem, said Ryan. Ryan spent considerable time explaining why the holes in his boat were not a problem. When that didn't work, Ryan's friends, Pablo, Brian and JJ defended his work. What's your problem with women? asked Pablo. You're a hive of alt-right scum and villainy, said Brian. Dweebs, assholes, and man babies, said Ryan. The more the passengers complained about the structural flaws in Ryan's boat, the more Ryan and his friends insulted and belittled them. Rest assured that most of these dweebs are shouting into the void, said Ryan. Look at my passenger tears, Morg, mocked Brian. Most confusing of all were the other passengers who insisted that Ryan's boat was the greatest boat of all time. Let your hatred of Ryan's boat die, they said. Kill it if you have to. But what about all the holes? This boat is going to sink. We can't see any holes, they replied. Ryan's boat has made millions of dollars, so it must be great, said the pro-Ryan passengers. But we paid to sail on the boat before we knew it had holes in it, said the anti-Ryan passengers. We will never sail again on a boat made by this corporation, they added. A few months later, Kathleen's Boat Corporation made another huge boat. This one was overseen by a different boat maker called Ron. Many passengers refused to sail on Ron's boat because of all the holes in Ryan's boat and because Ryan and his friends had mocked and insulted them. Ron asked the passengers to give his boat a try and even when they refused, he didn't insult them. Many suspected that Ron's boat had less structural problems than Ryan's but a point needed to be made and Ron's boat was the corporation's first ever financial disaster. What financial disaster, said Ryan, when passengers pointed out that his faulty boat had caused the financial disaster. It was nothing to do with Ryan's boat, said Ryan's friends. It was because of new boats from rival boat corporations and uh, because of boat fatigue. By now, at least half of the passengers had lost all faith in the boat corporation. Kathleen was fired. Ryan's future boat projects were cancelled. The corporation's next huge boat, overseen by JJ, was another financial disaster. They only had themselves to blame. The end. So there we go, a nice little bedtime story for all you man babies and I hope you enjoy that story. Uh, something about it does, I know it's a work of fiction, but uh, seems strangely familiar and old Ruin can't get his head around why that would be. Um, I like to see it however as a tribute to me, the greatest director of the greatest movie and uh, I'm sure it's nothing more than that. Uh, so anyway, hope you enjoyed it, man babies. Until next time, tiddly do, wibbly wobbly, and herkily jerkily off. Good night. I'm on my own, broken alone. I feel the rain crashing down. All around this empty town, I'm searching for the lost and found.